Honorable President of India, thank you for your time, sir. It's a great honor and privilege for me to present to you the batch of 2011 Indian Foreign Service Officers. So this is a batch of 34, out of which there are 11 ladies. 75% of them are with uh, technical background, so we have a very rich and diverse crop. So they've been with the Foreign Service Institute for one year, and uh, during that time they've done courses uh, uh, on international relations, uh, economic diplomacy, um, international law, uh, cultural heritage, and they've also done uh, district training, army, air force, and naval attachments. At the moment, they're undergoing their six months um, desk attachment in the ministry. They are at this point ready to proceed on their first postings abroad for language uh, to learn their compulsory foreign language. So we are all very delighted to be here, and uh, the probationers especially would be very honored to hear your vision and words of wisdom from you about the state of the country or the place of India in the world. Thank you very much, sir. Honorable President, Dean Foreign Service Institute, senior officers and colleagues, good afternoon. Sir, with your permission, I will briefly talk about the training we had at Foreign Service Institute, which lasted for little more than a year and it started in December 2011. It was module-wise, the training was very diverse with exposure to a variety of institutions and a multitude of subjects. Uh, we had international relations module where we were taught theory of international relations, contemporary issues of importance in foreign affairs. We were also taught administration and accounts and various rules of the Foreign Service. Uh, we also had sessions on culture, art, religion and philosophy focusing on the cultural traditions of India, classical dance, music, etc., in addition to a one-week attachment with Indian Council of Cultural Relations. We also had uh, attachments with External Publicity Division of Ministry of External Affairs to understand how to handle and face the media. We also had a uh, one-week attachment with Public Diplomacy Division of Ministry of External Affairs to understand the public profile or image of Indian diplomacy. We had a six-week course on International Economics and Business Management module with the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade. We had a one-week uh, attachment with Indian Society for International Law, where we were taught Charter of United Nations and various conventions under international law which were relevant for India and us. We also had attachments with United Services Institute and Indian Defense Studies and Analysis. We had also spent a few days with Indian Army, Indian Navy, and Indian Air Force. We had also a mission attachment where we were sent to Indian missions abroad and uh, in our year we were sent to three countries in three batches, that was South Korea, Egypt and uh, Indonesia. Thank you. Honorable President, Dean FSI, senior colleagues, good afternoon. To continue, to give the probationers a deeper understanding of the country that they are to represent, the probationers were sent on a three-week Bharat Darshan to explore different parts of the country. They also had a brief stint at UN offices in New York and Geneva to get a glimpse into the exciting theater of multilateral diplomacy. To understand the functioning of local administration at the district and village levels, the probationers had a month-long district attachment at different districts spread throughout the country. Currently, prior to embarking on their postings to learn their foreign languages, the probationers are undergoing desk attachments at various functional or territorial desks in the Ministry of External Affairs as they are allotted. To sum it up, it was a multifaceted, enriching and thoroughly exciting training period. Thank you. Dean Foreign Service Institute, Senior Officers, Distinguished Participants, Provisioners, I welcome you to the Rashtrapati Bhavan, the building which was constructed by our colonial masters at the zenith of their colonial power in the 30s of the last century, and the building which also witnessed the peaceful transformation of transfer of powers into the hands of Indian 
I have the privilege of welcoming you to that historic RDR Vice Regal Laws, now Presidential House. I congratulate you on your success in a very difficult competitive examination which you passed through, and your success speaks of your academic excellence. You are just on the threshold of entering into your new career, in which you will serve your motherland for the next three, three and a half decades. You are entering into the service where you are to deal with the international affairs when the whole world is undergoing through some major changes. When I talk of changes, I do not have at the back of my mind only the economic difficulties which the world economy witnessed for the last three, three and a half years, beginning from the first major international financial crisis in 2008-9, from which the world economy never fully recovered. Even the latest projection, which International Monetary Fund has made in respect of the developed economies, they have indicated, compared to 2013, the growth of the advanced economies, in other words, the G8 countries, now of course G10, would be 2.2% from 1.8% of GDP in recorded in 2013. That means the world economy is still fragile. There have been major political changes in West Asia, in Africa, even in our neighbors with which you will have to deal in course of your assignment in the coming years. I had the privilege of serving this prestigious ministry as Minister of External Affairs in two stages. Once in 95, 96, and again in 2006 to 2008. And from my experiences, I can tell you that the job which you are entering into and the responsibilities which will be entrusted to you are really daunting and at the same time worth acceptance. You will get the opportunity to show your mental, your intellectual capacity, your initiative and drive, and to take the responsibilities of your action. We are fortunate to have a great visionary who formulated our foreign policy since independence for a long period of almost two decades, from 1947 till his death in 1964, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the architect of modern India and first Prime Minister of India. Nehru had a vision as the Congress leader 
what should be the foreign policy of India after obtaining independence. And it was mainly due to his initiatives our fight against our colonial master, our fight for political emancipation was leaked with the efforts of the international efforts and struggle against colonialism. Therefore, it was no wonder that even almost one year before the independence at the initiative of Nehru, our Asian conference took place in India in 1946. So we had a clearly laid out foreign policy. But the world is constantly changing. And therefore, in your duties and responsibilities, you will find that the situation which prevailed in the shadow of the Cold War in the context of the world completely devastated, especially Europe and part of Asia and Africa, in the Second World War, and the world which is emerging today are not the same. Even in the 50s and 60s, when the war against colonialism, apartheid, was continuing, most of the developing countries, international trade was confined only to supply the raw materials and to import the finished products. And at least one thing has happened, and I had the privilege of witnessing it before my very eyes as India's finance minister, that in all major international financial conferences today, whether in the annual general body meeting of IMF and World Bank, Asian Development Bank, or in the periodical conferences of the G20 countries, finance ministers, before the summit, which accounts for more than 84 percent of the world's GDP, the G20 countries, of which India has an important place, it is recognized that whatever improvement has taken place in the world output, substantially it is the contribution of the emerging economies. And two emerging economies, large enough, China and India, are steadily growing, though there have been some slippage in Indian economy, and naturally, concerns have been expressed. But recently, in one of my observations, I have stated that there is reason to express our concern, to feel concerned, but no reason to feel despondent. Because as a student of history, I know that the last 10 years, from 2004 to 2012-13, in a campus of 10-year period, Indian economy grew at 7.9 percent, which is unparalleled, to any 10-year period from 1951 when we began our first developmental planning and which carried on interjected between the annual plans to the successful conclusion of the 11th five-year plan. Therefore, there is no reason of despondence. Of course, there are necessity to have corrective measures to 
to adjust our policies and to equip ourselves with new techniques, new knowledge and skill to deal with the situation. Aspirations for democracy and struggle for establishing democratic norms in the people of different regions are still prominent. It is not correct to say that it was confined in the 90s to the socialist countries when after the collapse of mighty Soviet structures in East Europe and certain other countries where wind of democracy blew very fast. Now in West Asia, Africa and many other countries, the same wind is blowing with varying velocity and you will have to deal with it. Energy crisis, particularly in developing economies like India, are going to be a major problem and predicament to our process of development. Similar is the problem of the food security. With the growing world population, on the one hand, the land available for cultivation and growing food are getting shrinked and demand for food grains are getting increased. Therefore, the alternate sources, technological solutions, innovations are absolutely necessary. All these things you will learn in the process of your training and learning while working. Only one advice I can give to you. You have completed your formal education after obtaining the respective degrees. You will complete your training 